All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, my name's David Breen, and, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay. Ah. What? Ah. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So this is going to be a kind of like a um, a blog series. What I'm going to do wouldn't that be something if all of a sudden you see your hand pop up with the coffee cup and be like, "What?" All right. So face shift, 3D Studio Max, and Unreal Engine. These are the three programs that we will be using. And this video series, this is part one, it's just going to kind of be off the cuff, non-scripted, and I'm just going to kind of show you what I'm working on in every video and give you pointers on how to accomplish certain things. Okay, so... Here's the character, the next character in the video game. The video game is called We Are Fictional. It's going to be a click and point adventure game, but it's also going to have a lot of elements. Uh, it's going to have some RPG elements, some adventure action elements. It's not just going to be a puzzle game. It's going to have, um, it's going to be kind of a collage of many genres that I like to play. So, here's one of the characters. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that the polygons are quite dense. There's quite a bit of them. And there are no turbo smooths on this character. Because if you turbo smooth or mesh smooth a character or any 3D graphic, Unreal Engine or any video game engine cannot interpret those modifications. One second, my cat's trying to jump over here. Come here. <clears throat> Meow. Okay. So, you can't use Turbo Smooths. So, what you have to do, come here, is you have to uh, skin the geometry you want. Usually you would just start with simple geometry that is good for a game engine. Rather, if you're making a cartoon or an animated sequence, any kind of CGI, you can rely on turbo smooths. Like you take this jacket you make here and you can add a turbo smooth and it will make it more detailed. But if you import that into a video game engine, it won't work. It will not interpret this turbo smooth. So you have to actually skin the detail you want. So what you see is what you get. So I had to go back through all my characters and apply their turbo smooths and reapply their skins. And so you want to keep that in mind. Since this game I'm working on is going to be what I, my goal is to make it like an interactive cartoon. So I want it to look smooth. I don't want blocky characters where you can see the polygons. It just ruins the whole effect. So as you can see here, the only reason it looks so smooth in face shift, in red shift, <laughs> is because there's no turbo smooths. What you see is what you got. This has all been skinned at that exact geometry. So that's very important. If you want your characters to look good in the game, you can't rely on modifiers. You gotta do it yourself. You gotta take that extra step and do the extra work. Get that done. And of course for face shift, I apologize if I smack my lips and you can hear that. I, it comes through in the mic a lot uh, more it's very annoying, I know, I'm sorry. So, you got all your morph targets. If you've seen my previous videos, I've gone through the process of importing, exporting 
different things into the engine. Now I do have some awesome news, and the awesome news is that the glitch that we had before in my previous tutorial, which is almost at like 26,000 views, which is awesome, there was a glitch where if you tried to take your face shift animation and bring it back into 3ds max to modify and then you exported it from 3ds max into unreal engine it would glitch and twitch out and do this weird stuff it doesn't do that anymore so i'm using unreal engine uh, version 4.13 so it's the latest and they have actually fixed it it's been fixed so that's awesome so now we can take our stuff we can take our assets and we can bring it into our 3D package of choice, modify it, perfect it, then bring it into Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick and just prove that it works. So we go in here. First of all, let me show you a demo of the actual game that is being developed right now by Breen 3D. That's me. All right, so here's the game so far. We've got Mr. Furious, our hero. No cat, can't go on the keyboard. We got this uh, poster on the wall. I made that, it's pretty cool. And we've got, you know, a living room. And we've got a book here, How to Survive the Apocalypse. So I wanna make that an actual book that's funny make it so you can pick up the book and read it. My sister and I actually created a book series um, similar along those lines that was pretty funny. I'll have to throw those in there. You've got a TV, you can turn off and on, Nintendo systems, VHS tapes, you go down here, we got the kitchen, I'm gonna make it so you can open the fridge, you know, open up the cabinets, have a moderate level of interactivity let me go over here, I got some objects floating over there. Got a door you can open, you know, just basic stuff. Light, you can turn off and on. So I'll go ahead and hit play. And uh, I hope the audio isn't too loud on this. So I'll just turn it down a little bit. All right, so here's, here's the game. So you can click where you wanna walk and you gotta walk there. Or like Diablo style, you can click and hold. You just kinda walk around. So now if I go up to this lamp and I click on the lamp, or you can right or left click, it'll turn it on. And you go over to the TV and you can turn the TV on. And you notice it starts to play a sound, you can turn it off. And you can only interact with it if you're close enough. So you just kind of walk around, and I like to have the the camera follow you like this. It's gonna be it's gonna have click and point adventure qualities, but like I said, it's also gonna have action adventure RPG qualities. So I don't want to limit the game to being like this, you know, where you have a static camera and you move from scene to scene. I want to incorporate this as well. When you go to a particular angle, it will switch the camera. And then you go out of that area and it switches back to this. So you can go in the kitchen. Nothing really to interact with in here yet. And you go over this door. I just put this door in so it doesn't have, it's not fully functional yet, but you can click on it and open it up. What I mean by fully functional is I don't have it programmed complete. So if I right click on it again, it'll just replay the animation. So. That's what I have so far. I have all the assets created for their entire house and all their rooms. I just haven't put it together yet. Most of my time lately has been spent redoing all the characters. So all six characters in the game, the main characters, I have them all finished. They're all, all their turbo smooths have been um, completed. And so now I'm just working on some, some final touches and getting all the characters into Unreal Engine. All right, 
So let's do a little demo. I'll show you how to import your animation back into 3ds Max and then from 3ds Max into Unreal Engine and uh, show you how that works. But before I do that, you can go ahead and fast forward if you want, but I just want to show you real quick, if you're not familiar with Unreal Engine and how the blueprint system works, it's actually really awesome. It's basically C++. You're programming with C++, but it looks like this. Yeah, it's awesome. So you just follow the logic from left to right, where the arrows point. Do this, then do that, then do that, then do that. And of course, there's variations like branches. If it's true, do that. False, do that. You know, you got your variables. Everything's color coordinated, iconic. It's great. You take the time to learn it, and you'll be off and running. So here's the TV. It's got the video playing on this material, element two. So as you know, if you do graphic design, and I hope you do have a slight level of confidence, competence with that and confidence, if you're watching this video. So as you know, elements are just the, uh, in 3ds Max or Maya or whatever, these are the materials. So you have one single object that has multiple materials on it, and that's what the elements are. So the, this screen has a different element from everything else. And so this element is this animated, this video, static. If you go to the event graph, this is all the code that you need. This is all the code to turn the television on and off and to have the animation play on a specific element and to have the sound play. So real quick, just go through this. Event begin play, set material of element two right element two right here the target is the TV TV so set the material of the TV to black TV which means just a blank screen which is this one right here it's black now That's weird. Input action right click is not connected. But if I go in here and play, right, it works. Uh, that's for a different reason. Okay. It works because there's a there's another option in here that basically just turns a right click into um, the same thing as a left click. So normally you could do that, but forget about that for now. So you would right click here on the graph basically and just say, you know, event mouse click event actor on clicked so it's that saying is actor on clicked is what's the actor on clicked you're saying when you click on the TV is what you're saying because that's this is the blueprint this all this code this entire blueprint is all about this television that's it it's object oriented programming so this isn't the program you don't put all your code in here for the entire game you only put your code in here for the television and then you connect all your objects together and get them to communicate. It's really cool. All right. So yeah, so when you click on the TV, you create a branch and you can just hold B and click. You use branches a lot. And um, a Boolean variable just means it's true or false. So you create, you would go over here and you'd create a variable. You make it a Boolean, you know, create a variable and uh, whatever you want to name it and you go over here to variable type and you set what you want it to be so a boolean is just means true or false so you'd say in range and in range is are you close enough to the TV to do something in this case have it turn on then you make a flip-flop flip-flops a little complicated basically what it does is every time you click it will play a next time you click it'll play B next time a B so just alternates between the two options. So the first time you click on it, it will set the material of the TV of element two within that TV to TV static. Then you go over here and you say after you set that material, 
play static buzz, the audio. If you click it again, set material to blank black TV and stop any audio or target specifically the static buzz, stop that. Not any audio because that would be bad. Just this specific audio clip. And so that's pretty much it. And then right over here you say on component begin overlap. This has to do with this in range variable. So remember this only plays out if this is true that it's in range. Well, how do you know it's in range? This variable doesn't actually have any meaning other than what you make of it. So you're saying in range. And then you go over here, on component begin overlap box. This is the box. So you got in here, you got your TV, and you got your static buzz queue, which is this here. And by the way, the I'll get to that in a minute. All right, box. This is just a random box I threw in. And this is the area that it looks at to see if you're close enough to get to the TV. So on begin overlap, you set your variable to true. You're in range. If you're overlapping the box, you're in range. If you're not overlapping the box, you're not in range. So that's it. And this audio clip right here, you click on this audio, static buzz Q, you add components here. And the static buzz cue, right here, you, you import your sound. And this radius you see is simply the, um, the area where the sound will fall off. So if you walk away from the object, the sound will start to fade away. OK. So that's just a basic thing to give you an idea of the process, even if you have no idea what I just said. Um, I'm going to definitely be needing more people to create assets, to, to program things, to put the world together and just get everything going, uh, you know, create an inventory system and um, hit points and to create enemies. And, Dialogue. There's going to be a lot of dialogue, a lot of interactive dialogue. And this character here is Mr. Furious's sister, Toddle. And of course, this is, oops, this is Mr. Furious here. And so this is his sister. And I want to have really interesting dialogue. And the reason why. See, when you animate, you have to kind of exaggerate opening your mouth with this program. So um, this character here and the rest of the characters, I want them to be very animated, look like a cartoon. Um, I want to have dialogue options, not necessarily what you say, but how you say it. So it won't be like choose your own adventure. There will be a solid storyline. Um, but depending on whether you talk to people enthusiastically, sarcastically, or um, pessimistically, you will get different responses from people. And if you continue to be sarcastic or pessimistic or, or enthusiastic to a particular character, they will start to talk back to you in the same way. And uh, that will be really easy to program. I already know how to do that. So I think that'll bring in an extra little element of fun. People can kind of be themselves while they're playing the game and see how the characters react differently. And it could also affect little things like um, whether they help you or not when certain things happen. So I'm really excited about working on this. And let's go ahead and bring this character into Unreal Engine or uh, 3ds Max first and then Unreal Engine. So you just got to record hit record and we'll do a test and then I'll show you so hey everybody my name is Toddle okay so we hit play so let's just get my mug off of there hey everybody my name is Toddle <laughs> so that turned out pretty good you can uh, hit refine which I usually do but in this case, 
I don't need to do that because it came out pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to leave it. And we'll go to export FBX. And we want to make sure we have the latest toddle on here. Because if we go here, we can. See, I've been messing around with it a lot, trying to get it to work. So make sure you have the proper one selected. We go back to the clip and export FBX. Go to the right one. I'm not going to bother with the audio for now. Go to desktop. We are fictional, and let's put this in phase shift exports and I'll make this total test. All right, so then we go back into 3ds Max and import total test. And we want to make sure that we update the animation, not add. That way it applies the animation to the face we have and doesn't re-import the entire model. And this is kind of what we have. Just you want to make sure you import all the morphs. And hit OK. And there we go. Well, why are glasses all messed up? Oh, I don't think I had, yeah, I forgot to turn. There we go. The skinning was off. All right, so now we got our animation. Now we want to bring this character here into the uh, Unreal Engine. And remember last time, I don't need to really make any modifications. It's not necessary because last time, it did, I didn't have to. All it took was for me to bring it into 3ds Max and as soon as I tried to export it from here it would glitch. So just to kind of proof of concept that it doesn't do that now, you want to select the entire head and all the, the bones and everything. Go export selected and then under, uh, let's see, let's go to Toddle Animation Test Unreal. Yes, and you want to make sure you turn on triangulate because you never use this ever unless you're bringing it into a video game engine. Then you make sure you, you check that. If you don't, you're, you're in trouble. So make sure you check that, check animation. You don't need to bake it or anything. Um, I'm not really sure what that does, whether it's on or off or not. So make sure the deformations, skins and morphs are definitely checked. That's the whole point. Embedded media means all the textures, materials, yes. And then hit OK. And of course, you're always going to get a couple errors. It's just saying that I couldn't find some references to some materials that I don't use anymore. Probably should delete those links, but whatever. Now we go back into Unreal Engine. And I'm going to open up this test folder so I don't get all those assets mixed in with everything else. Right click, import, and we'll go to Total Animation Unreal Test. Now we want to import the skeletal mesh, the mesh itself, and you want to make sure import morph targets is checked. And uh, I know I, I went through some settings in the previous video. But this is pretty much what it needs to look like. Um, exported time works. So import all. And now that's going to take its time. And we're going to let that import. Well, that's importing. Um, let me go ahead and save this as total animation test. That's going to take a second. So yeah. Ah, yay. Um, so face shift is amazing. The greatest software ever created, as far as I'm concerned. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's go back in here and see what's going on. All right, so it's importing the morph targets right now. Let's go ahead and explain a few things. So this mouth and the tongue these are all separate objects with their own morphers. And as you can see, the, uh, the driving force of this mesh is four bones. 
you got the, the shoulder bone, which if you're importing an entire body, the shoulder bone gets attached, gets wired to the uh, rib cage. That way when you move your character around, the shoulder will move the entire face. And then you've got the neck, and the neck basically just moves the, the head, and then you got the two eyeballs. All right, let's go back in here, should be done. Cannot find bind pose, blah, blah, blah. Not sure what that's about. All right, so then we go in here and we can see here's our, here's our mesh. Now the reason why you can't see the eye textures is because they're hidden behind the lens. I have a transparent lens, but unfortunately Unreal Engine, I don't know how, if anybody knows how, please let me know. Um, but it doesn't seem like it imports transparency materials. So you can see the glasses and the lenses should be transparent um, to some degree. So you have to go in and fix that after the fact, which is a little time consuming. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, animation and check this out. We didn't have any of this last time. You have an actual graph of every morph target. This is amazing. So you can actually go in, expand this window, and take a look at this entire graph. And you can actually move every keyframe around. It's insane. So it's compiling the shaders right now. That's why the, the textures aren't up to date. Not really sure how to get these this text off the screen. Uh, advanced display info, none. There we go. All right, so that'll load up in a second. But yeah, you just hit play, and you can see that the animation is actually playing. So you would just uh, like the blueprint, very similar to turning on the television you would just have this character sitting on a sofa or whatever and when you go up to her and click on her you would play the animation, play the audio clip and you're done. <laughs> I mean it's it's really awesome that this works now. So we have a way to do amazing smooth dialogue very quickly. All right, so thank you for watching. This will be my part one. And as I work on the game, I will show showcase how I do everything. I'll just keep updating it. So it'll be kind of like a tutorial demo diary thing. And um, if you have any questions, um, leave them in the comments for other people to answer and I'll look at them too and answer them. And it's just such a... I've been studying Unreal Engine back before Unreal Engine 4 came out. I was using UDK 3 and jumped on Unreal Engine 4 as soon as it came out. And I've been studying it ever since and it's incredible. Let me just show you real quick some more blueprints, like the uh, top-down character. So here's all the code for the actual movement when you click the mouse and it moves around. This code I did not make. This was a template. You can pick from several templates when you start. And I uh, started with the top-down view point-and-click template. So this is the code on how to do the point-click for your actual character. And then I've got all my objects in here. And if you have an object that's just stationary, like this sofa, um, you don't need it to animate, you don't need it to have any interactivity. This sofa does have some interactivity. No, it doesn't. 
So here it is, love seat. This love seat is simply a mesh. That's it. And it has some collision on it, but that's it. It's just a mesh. Um, but this light is also a mesh. Let's see where it's at? Where is it? Lamp. See, you got two of them. You got the mesh itself. But since I want it to be functional and turn on and off, you create a blueprint for it. And then the blueprint has the object. And embedded within this mesh, you have the light source and you have the radius and anything else you would need that would uh, the code can draw from. So as you're here in your actual event graph, you see all these objects over here that you created here in the, uh, the viewport area of the blueprint. The construction script is um, a little more complex. It just I'm not going to explain it right now. But. So the lamp basically says is it in range like just like before see this code down here if it's in range flip flop between toggle visibility of the point light and play the sound of the light switching on and off all right so next video i will have toddle in her bedroom and make it so you can walk up to her talk to her, have some dialogue, and watch her do some animation. <laughs> that reminds me of Beetlejuice. Open the door and it's just a brick wall. All right, well, thank you for watching, everybody, and have a great day. And please thumb up my video. Give it a like if you could. I'd appreciate it. Have a great day. Let's see how you turn this off. There we go. Bye.